Good morning, everybody. It's Caroline Cobell with RoamingRV.com, and today I want to talk to you about preparing your RV in the winter if you happen to be staying in your RV over the winter time. And if you're like us, who aren't going down south until around the middle of December, these are concerns that we have to be prepared for. So it's not impossible. Um, yeah, the wind, weather's changing, and it feels like snow might be arriving at any time. But that doesn't mean that RVers have to quit living in their RV or head south earlier than originally planned. And probably the main concerns during the winter are staying warm and be, being able to use the water and sewer hookups and not have everything freeze up, including yourself, okay? So some of the things that I think are important, I'm not an expert, um, but we have lived in the RV over the winter, so having a, a first of all, having a secondary heat source is important. By only using your furnace, um, the propane supply will be quickly used up and when the tank is empty your furnace is no longer working. Um, it seems as if, you know, that seems to only happen in the middle of the night when you can't do anything about it and no amount of blankets are going to keep you warm. So there's many different types of safe and economical heaters on the market that will do the job quite well. So visit your favorite hardware store or ask your friends what they recommend. We actually just purchased a um, small heat, well it's not too small, it's about two, two or three feet high, uh, heater from Costco and I think we paid $69 Canadian. Seems to do the trick. Uh, the wattage is a little high so we have to be extra careful uh, when we're using it. I turn the heater off if I'm putting the microwave on or going to boil water in the kettle. So that's, I mean it's just a little nuisance but it works great. One of the concerns in the winter time, and it's a lot of it is caused by um, propane, your propane furnace, is moisture or condensation. It's really hard to avoid. So sometimes a dehumidifier is a really good idea. Um, check for drafts or problem areas and use insulation tape where possible. And keep a window or a vent slightly open for ventilation which helps reduce the moisture, which I know it sounds surprising, but you know, it's raining or snowing outside and you're opening up a vent, but it is important. Now, if you can, if you're going to be spending the winter in one location and the RV park where you're staying allows it, skirting around the RV will help reduce drafts and keep you warmer. If you're parked in one spot and, you know, put Putting skirt around your unit, whether it's vinyl or made of lumber or wood, or I've seen some, um, it's almost, I, can't, I don't even know the, the what it's made out of, but it almost looks like tinfoil around it. So, but you have to ask, uh, not all parks will allow this, but not having skirting increases the chances that the holding tanks are going to freeze and it may cause permanent damage that could cost you a lot of money. Now, once you have the skirting in place, you could conceive it conceivably put insulation in the space below the RV and um, you know I think a must is a heat lamp placed near your tanks for just at that added little bit of protection. Two reasons not to use an electric heater under your RV is the chance of starting a fire and the cost of electricity will be extremely high. Now most parks have got you on a meter if you're there longer than a week or two. Uh, so you'll probably notice that the bill would be extremely high if you've got an electric heater running constantly underneath your uh, RV. Close the valves on your gray and black water tanks until you're ready to dump them. This is a lesson I had to be taught many years ago when the ice started building up in the hose until it became one solid big piece that wasn't very much fun to thaw. So have the drainage hose placed at a very deep angle so water doesn't sit in it as well. Okay, Insulate all your pipes, both interior and exterior ones. Um, and strategically placing light bulbs in cupboards or closets will really help keep the threat of freezing away. One thing that we are started doing um, is keeping all of our cupboards open just a little bit and it keeps so that when you do have heat on in your RV, the um, heat goes into the cupboards as well. Now a heat tape, um, yeah, 
Okay, a heat tape is wrapped around the exterior water hose is an absolute must. And make sure it covers both the outside water tap and the inlet into your RV. Cover this with insulation and wrap it up nice and tight. So don't insulate the sensor though because you want it exposed to the cold so it will run all the time. Now, another thing is insulating all the pipes, both interior and exterior ones, and placing light bulbs and, and covers or closets. I mentioned that earlier, I believe. Uh, it will help keep the threat of freezing away. Now, when possible, don't use your fresh water tank. Use the park's water system. This is just one more thing that could go wrong, and it's easier to prevent problems than trying to fix them. By keeping... Um, you know, hook, by being hooked up to the city water system is a lot better. Um, when you go around your RV to plug up any problems, don't forget to put insulation in the roof vents. That's a, um, a thing too. Another thing is if you're in an area that's going to snow, there's uh, pieces of styrofoam that you can put on top of your um, slides. If you've got a, a cover, an awning above your slide, you put some of that styrofoam in between and then the, the weight of the snow won't... Um, way down the the awning cover and you get that much extra insulation okay another thing is heavy socks or slippers will help keep your feet warm and I find a fleece jacket gives me just that added a little bit of protection when the air inside the RV is cool and although we're not um, you know, we're going, planning on going down south in a couple, you know, probably in about the middle of December. I have spent many winters uh, nice and warm and snugly in an RV. And I, as we learn from our mistakes, uh, each year got easier. Okay. So, you know, think about it. Curled up on a chest field or a chair in a nice warm blanket and watching out the window as the snow is falling can be a relaxing and cozy way to spend an afternoon. So I hope uh, you find these uh, little tips helpful and that if you are staying in your RV over the winter that you're nice and warm and cozy and aren't overly cold. So thanks again. Uh, it's Caroline Quabell with RoamingRV.com and if you're the kind of people that need to would like or prefer to read this I will put a link down below in the box uh, to this post that's on my blog. Thanks. Have a great day, and I hope you stay nice and warm this winter. Bye-bye.